Hi everyone, it's Tom from the future here. Uh, about halfway through recording this video, I noticed that my recording software wasn't working too well, and so it started looking very, very um, laggy with this game. But you can see this is Tabletop Simulator, and it, it runs pretty smoothly. Like, you can move things around, rotate them. Uh, it's pretty cool, but you'll see in the first 15 minutes of this video, it looks quite choppy um, and quite difficult. Um, so this is not at all what Tabletop Simulator looks like. Uh, the first 15 minutes of this video, but after that it uh, it changes back to uh, I fix my settings and everything looks pretty smooth. So yeah, enjoy the video. Hi everyone, we're going to start a solo game here using the Mercenary Ear campaign as a basis. Uh, you can see I have Missile Threat set up in a program called Tabletop Simulator, which will allow us to play the game. You can use it to play the game online or just play solo games. Uh, I'm just going to use it for example purposes rather than trying to film the table. Um, this way I can easily show you what's going on. Uh, I will upload Missile Threat to this uh, system as well. So you can use this all this module yourself. Uh, and Tabletop Simulator is available on Steam. You can download it through Steam. Okay, first step is to look at the solo rules. Uh, let's just quickly have a look at our um, Mercenary Air campaign again. We have a Gazelle helicopter and a Mirage F1. Uh, we have two pilots and we're going to fuel up both our aircraft which will cost us I think 0 0.2 uh, million Rand each. Let's we'll double check that. Let's see we want solar rules at the moment. We want Mystery Air Campaign. Where are we? Okay, upkeep. Small aircraft cost 0.1 points to fuel up, so they're both small contact size, so that's going to cost us 0.2 in total. That's a down to 24.7, so they're quite cheap to fuel up. Uh, the Gazelle is going to have all four hub points with hot missiles. Uh, Mirage F1, we might as well take two R550 magics. Um, and I've just given my pilots proper names um, that would make sense for mercenaries with the government in Central Africa. Uh, kind of a South African style there. So, Gazelle, four times hot. Mirage F1 has two times uh, 550 and just mark two. That's not how you spell mark. Something like that. Okay, and our flight plan is that we come in on turn one and leave on turn five. And we'll keep an eye out on what's going on as we destroy missions. Uh, we've chosen a uh, close a uh, combat air patrol rather than uh, a close air support just just to keep it simple and show you the solar rules okay so we filled up our aircraft everything's ready to go we don't need to do damage or anything like that uh, repair damage uh, if we were really smart we'd probably hire some more aircraft and some pilots to, uh, to do things like um, maybe this helicopter here could be useful for search and rescue if one of our pilots goes down but we won't worry about that at the moment so Let's go to, we're in the Solar Rules and Mercenary Air Campaign PDF here. We'll go to the start of the Solar Play Rules. And we're going to uh, choose our mission, which we've already got a Comet Air Patrol of a low risk. Um, and our points limit, if we look at how many points we're actually using, um, we have 27 points for both our aircraft. An average pilot, I believe, costs uh, eight points. Let me just check. All you need to do is check um, down here for your pilot costs. Uh, average eight points. Um, now, helicopter pilots are slightly cheaper, but our pilots, we're just gonna, they just count as regular aircraft pilots. We're not going to use the helicopter pilot cost for that. So 16 points plus 27. That should all be... Uh, under 50 points, yeah, 43 points. So that's our points limit for the game. If we look here, 50 points or less. Uh, aircraft 
the, the aircraft modifier table is just going to be one aircraft every time we draw a random aircraft. Uh, and you can see I've modified this table slightly. I'll release an updated version of these these rules over the next uh, week or so. I'm just tweaking things as I found that things like high-risk missions were a bit broken. Um, ended up having three new aircraft coming in every almost every turn at 100 points, which is completely untenable. So I've just altered a few things here, and I'll, I'll release an updated version of that. Mission setups. So it says you're going to use cards to generate what's going on. It's low risk, so this will be the column we're using. Um, and we're going to, in a striker comma air patrol mission, we're going to have a mission target in the middle. And our ground assets will be around that, around 24 inches from the enemy ingress zone. So, comma air patrol. We need to roll some dice, 50 points or less. We have D3 minus one. Um, uh, ground assets in this mission. So it's not too bad. Let's do that. I'm going to roll our dice, d3 plus 1. So that's a 2, uh, 2 minus 1 is only one uh, ground asset, so it's pretty easy. Uh, let's say we make this, so I'm going to make a ruler, let's see, 24 inches, 24 inches about there, so I need a mission target. Oh, I'll, I'll make the enemy ingress zone this edge here. And this is 24 inches up to there. And in fact, this table's a bit larger than it should be. Um, this should be six foot by four foot and mine's more, quite a bit larger. So I don't worry too much about that, just for example purposes. Um, and l let's just say that this is my the ground, the ground target. And let's put some paint around ground target and so I'm going to place uh, two, just one ground asset which isn't very much um, so I'm going to draw a card and I'm going to put it I can put it anywhere around there uh, let's say we put it here I'll turn over what it, what it is and it's a jack so now we look at the this um, uh, enemy ground asset uh, table or enemy ground asset, asset, asset table and Jack is an early warning radar. So we can replace that with an early warning radar, which I have over here somewhere. Early warning radar. So we're just gonna replace that with, with the early warning radar. We can delete that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think I can discard it or I can just delete it. Delete it. Okay, so that's our mission set up. We've got our early warning radar there. Um, this will be our friendly ingress zone, the six inches from here, and this will be the enemy ingress zone, and I can just mark those in pen if I want to. Uh, we can be blue. That's us here. And enemy can be red. Mark that there. Oops, that didn't work. Apply. Uh, do -do -do. Go. Uh, in fact, I can even draw a line. That's much cleaner. Look at that. Okay, cool. So turn one. Uh, we've done our mission setup. We don't need to roll for any random SAM sites or anything. So it looks like looking to be a pretty easy mission, really. Uh, combat air patrol. Uh, we had D three minus one. Draw a number of cards indicated on the table above. Place them as shown in the ground asset placement table on section on page three, which is this. And, okay, in the case of hostile aircraft, re random event, re-roll the randomization, randomized aircraft if it does not meet the criteria of the combat air patrol mission. So if it can hold more than 12 bombs, is it FAC or AWACS or a helicopter? So we're going to re-roll that. It's just going to be um, like fixed wing combat aircraft mostly. Cool, so we start the game as we normally would in missile threat. So we're going to use this... Um, this, this table here to generate our, our enemy aircraft from. Okay, so starting the game. Uh, we are in turn one, so I'll just set this to show one. This will be our turn counter, rotation value one. Okay, turn one. I believe usually we uh, draw a card to start with. It's random event each turn. Um, we've set up the mission. Naval vessels, enemy action. 
Okay, we don't need to worry about this. This will tell you roughly what each enemy aircraft's gonna do. Um, each turn in the flight plan phase, provided you have aircraft on or ground forces on the table, or have aircraft scheduled to arrive in the flight plan phase that turn, draw a plan card from the deck and consult the table below, applying the result from the applicable risk level. So we're low risk. Um, whoops. So I'm going to uh, place my aircraft first. So I have a MiG-23, uh, a Mirage F1, which I'm going to put here. Whoopsie. Flip that up. Turn that around. To there. And I can put it up to six inches from the, oops. Put it over there. Put it up to six inches in from the uh, our friendly ingress zone. I'll put them right there. Uh, and we also have a helicopter attack helicopter, which should be this one, Gazelle. And we'll put him at altitude one. Attraction value one. What's going on there? So for some reason it's not letting me change the value, which is great. Value one. Okay. Sure, that's going to get pretty awkward if I start picking it up and moving around. No, it's fine. It's just staying in one place. Okay, that's fine. Cool. All right, and we have four hot missiles, which I don't actually have markers for, surprisingly. I'm not sure where those markers are. Just one second. Okay, so I've sorted out the having uh, the hot missile, I didn't seem to have that in my markers, somehow I missed that, so it's fine. I'm just gonna put a few on the base here. I've got four of them, right like that. One, two, three, four. I should be able to just put them on the base there. Or if I make them smaller. Slip them in there. Maybe just there, nope. Gotta love this. Gotta love this game. Okay. One. Two. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Okay. Sure, this, it's much easier to do this in real life, but uh, clearly in this game, it's having some issues there. This is awesome. I'm just gonna put them up there like that. I'm sure that's fine. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that one. Hilarious. This is actually my first time trying to play Missile Threat in Tabletop Simulator, so you can see there's clearly some fun stuff going on there. And my Mirage has some, I think French ones up here, some R50 magic. Put some of those on here. easier. I think it's just because the helicopters are so low that they um, it doesn't let them stack in nicely. Two, three, no there's actually only two. Okay, that's cool. Can I just copy and paste? Nope. Okay, okay. so my aircraft are in. Uh, let's generate, see if there's a random event or not. It's a jack, which is a hostile ground asset. Okay. Turn on the card and consult the random ground asset table, depending on the risk of the mission. Will deployed after any of your aircraft have deployed. Be deployed 3D6 from random aircraft to yours in a random direction. Just realized I need a scatter dice too. So I'll need to generate one of those. I now I have a scatter dice. So I can roll the scatter dice. I'm gonna randomize which aircraft it is. So one to three, it's that guy. So it's, we're using him as a uh, as a focal point, and it's gonna be three to six inches from that random aircraft of yours. So I will just roll these. 
that way. Uh, 13 inches. It will not be placed within 12 inches of table edge, but as close as possible as the position indicated. Um, okay, so if we go from him 13 inches about there, and then it's going to be 12 inches from the table edge, so it's going to be right about there. Um, Uh, let's just put a, whoops, about there, so. Now we need to generate what it actually is. It's a two. So what is that? We look at random ground asset, should be way up here. Two is a light triple A. Okay, so we'll grab a light triple A. From here, light triple A there. Okay. So turn one, we actually move our stuff. We do our mandatory moves. Uh, the Mirage has a. If I look here, has a speed bonus of seven inches. Well, let's just make sure we're we're within the. Uh, Altitude ceiling as well. Okay, so our ceiling's six, so that's fine. I might start it. I might start a little bit lower than that though. Oh, I suppose it's fine. I'm, I'm just supposed to be providing top cover, so I'll just leave them there. Uh, so we're going six plus um, seven. That's 13. I'm just going to go 13 inches directly forwards. And our helicopter can choose how far he wants to go. Uh, he has a max speed of six, I think. Uh, max speed of six, that's fine. So in the action phase, I can go forwards six inches for one action, and I can go forward another six inches for another action, so that's 12 inches. That's easy. Uh, during my action, I'm not gonna do anything with, with this guy. Uh, the range of a Light triple A is eight inches up to altitude two. So I don't think it's in range of anything. Eight inches is too high altitude. Okay, so turn two. Turn really two. Okay, so we roll. We do another random event. Oops. It's an ace. Uh, if we look at our random event. It's good to kind of maybe copy, uh, maybe make an image of this random event as well, because it's quite good. Ace is hostile aircraft. So now we roll a d66 on uh, this one here, the rebel alignment. So Soviet communist supported. And we're going to roll a d66 to see which one it is. The blue will be the tens. So we've got a five. Uh, what? That should not be... Oh, it says it's 3. 5-3, five, three. okay. 5-3, five, three, which is a MI-8. Okay, let's get an MI-8. I have an actual MI-8 here. Whoop. Don't throw your toys. MI-8, we're going to determine which aircraft um, we're using as reference point. 1-3, uh, it's the Mirage. So from this guy, from our helicopter, uh, it is going to be hostile aircraft roll 2d6, determine the, uh, and determine the result from the, oh yeah, so usually you'd use the solo rules random aircraft table, but for the mercenary air campaign, you're gonna use um, this table here, your oppose, the opposing force of your d66 chart used to generate aircraft. Um, yeah, it follows the usual restrictions. Um, do, do, do. We need to generate its pilot quality, so we'll do that. Four, which is a low risk, poor quality. So we'll give them the poor quality marker. And, okay. If pilot quality is below the aircraft chosen to be attacked, it will be placed in a random direction. Uh, 2d6 times 2 inches. 
Okay. 2d6. Oh. Times 2. So that way in 7 inches. So if I start from here. Oopsie. Oopsie daisy. I need to somehow get him on the right. Um, what's the best way to do Oh, I can just measure from him. 7 inches. That'll be about there where that is. I think it said no closer than 12 inches. There you go. Uh, no closer than 12 inches. Aircraft will be in altitude, altitude of D6. Um, now if we just look at the doo -doo -doo, missile threat. Uh, we want the complete aircraft and ordnance list. We just look up MI8. We can see his altitude ceiling is altitude 2. So there's no point in rolling a d6 to work out what altitude he is. Uh, let's say on a 1 to 3 he's altitude 1. On a 4 plus altitude 2. So is altitude 1. That's easy. Rotation value 1. And I'm pretty sure I need to maybe just Alter these a little bit. Okay. Okay, so is it altitude one? Uh, what else does it say about which direction? I'm going to say which direction he'll be placed. If the enemy pilot is higher in quality than the pilot he's attacking, he'll be placed behind your aircraft in the rear aspect. So let's use his weapon range. Um, do, do, do. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, I want to say he's just trucking along down there. Uh, a random helicopter pilot. Okay, flat plan and phase. Uh, uh, it's mandatory move phase, so we're gonna move this guy. He's gonna go another six plus seven, which is thirteen inches, to there. Um, now, okay, on to the action phase. Best quality pilots go first, so we have our two average pilots. And this pilot will go last. Now, should we try to destroy this helicopter, I wonder? That's what this guy's job is, so why don't we do that? We'll try to at least. We can do a... Turn rate 60 degrees. So... Oops. We line up zero with this guy. We can turn 60, 120, uh, 180, okay, one, two, three, speed lost to about there, which is fine. like that and so that'll lose us let's get rid of these I haven't quite set this up correctly uh, that'll take us down to four speed Th sorry th uh, three speed oops what's happening here okay here we go vision value three uh, altitude is fine, but we also want to drop to altitude. Let me just double check if I'm doing this stuff correctly. It's been a while since I played Missile Threat, so it's good to check things and make sure you're doing the right stuff. Maneuvers. Let's see, maneuver and attack. I take two actions, you may turn aircraft and fire a weapon. This could be a cannon attack. We're firing up to two missiles. Okay, aircraft can be choose up to one altitude. Uh, 
there was a way to lose a lot more altitude. Uh, it takes you backwards. Low yo-yo. Allows you to move forwards and then lets you turn around. Split is. You lose one altitude. Gain two speed. So none of those really help me too much. But what I do want to do is maybe just set up for uh, an attack next turn. So I'm probably going to... Hmm... I'm going to alter my altitude, don't I? Climbing and diving. Takes one action. Form a steep dive. Decrease altitude by three, increase speed by four. That sounds good. Decrease altitude by three. And increase speed by four. Now that'll take me over six, so I'm going to cut throttle as well, which will reduce me down one. So I'll just get up to six there. Uh, problem is, I'm still going to be very fast, and that's going to put me way over here next turn. Um, so maybe it's best if I move around here like this. Cool. Now my next... Um, Action will be to move this guy forward 12 inches to here. Um, I can't quite... I think my hot missiles only have a range of 12 inches, but I'll use those to blow up the mission target and this early warning radar. Um, so this poor quality pilot, let's see what he does. So we need to look at the solar rules. Uh, what have we got? We've got an aircraft with A weapons only. Um, actually, we need to check what kind of um, weapons it would have. So, it has this 7.62mm, uh, which can attack ground targets. And it also has rocket pods, uh, so it would have D6 rocket pods. We'd roll that, and it would be, we roll that. When it comes on, we should roll that, so it'll have one, and usually you round up to the closest um, even number, so it would have two rocket pods. Um, so really it only has ground attack uh, weaponry. Aircraft with bombs or ground attack weapons only uh, versus air units going to attempt to avoid them. So what would he do? Uh, he can go up to max speed 5, so he can go 10 inches in any direction he wants to. Um, whoops. Put him over there. And it should be altitude two. Okay. So that is turn two. Now it'll be turn three. Hi everyone, I'm back again. Uh, starting turn three. I just noticed that my uh, recording software was very, very choppy recording this, so it must should be a lot smoother now. You should be able to uh, see me zooming in and moving things much more smoothly now. So apologies for that, but from now on it will be much smoother. Okay, so last turn in turn two, I noticed that I had moved this helicopter incorrectly. I'd moved him 10 inches um, in a new direction, and that's not quite correct. If we look at the uh, helicopter rules, they can move, takes one action, and turn to a new heading, takes one action as well. So actually he could only move f five inches directly forwards if he wanted to, um, or he could he turn and then move five inches. So what I'll try and do is I'll turn one action, and then I will, now I know this aircraft's gonna be over here somewhere, so if I can be kind of behind it, that would be good. I'll try to avoid it if I can. Let me move, you, when you, change to a new facing, you can uh, choose any new desired direction and I can then move up to 5 inches which is the max speed so I'll go to there great so that's turn 2 finished, we're now on to turn 3 I'm going to place another uh, we draw another random event Oops.
which is a two, which I believe is nothing. We go to the solo rules here. Scroll up to random event. Um, so low uh, random event. Sorry, where's the random event rules? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Two is nothing, so it's not. Only the face cards will actually give us some kind of um, random event occurring. So turn two, mandatory move. Uh, turn three, sorry, mandatory moves. Are uh, um. It is a mirage. Has a seven inch speed bonus. Seven plus six is thirteen. Just gonna go thirteen inches directly forwards, like so. Uh, the helicopters don't make a mandatory move. And now we'll activate in order of quality. Uh, both our pilots are average, and this enemy pilot is poor, so we're going to go first. So, we'll turn our um, Mirage around to engage this MI8. Uh, he has a turn radius of 60, a turn rate of 60 degrees. So I can turn, I'm using the, I'll use the inside numbers here. 60, uh, 120, so I'll lose one speed, two speed, uh, three speed to get to there. Uh, that should be fine. So I'll lose three speed, I'll take me out right to there, which is a good position for a gun attack. Right there, gonna lose three speed, rotation value is now three. And I reckon I could probably close in for a gun attack here, which looks pretty cool. Um, it's pretty much a straight line in front of us, so that's all good. Uh, so, I've got two 30mm cannons. We look at the missile threat rules. We're probably going to do a maneuver and attack. Oh, this is all the basic stuff. Maneuver and attack should be two actions. And I believe requires a... Um, a pilot check. So it's not going to be a simple cannon attack. It's going to be a maneuver and attack. You can choose up to one altitude to lose. If you want to, I probably won't do that because I want to be just above this helicopter rather than... Um... Okay, so I'm going to make a pilot check to pull off this maneuver and attack. Six, that's a success for an average pilot. Let me just double check all the stuff. Yeah, six or more for succeed the pilot check. Cool, so they pulled that off. Uh, I think there's no nothing else really to to work out there. We just see if the enemy can make a defensive maneuver. In order to make a defensive maneuver, pilot must make a pilot check. Uh, they are poor quality, so they need a four plus to pull this off. Sorry, uh, it's not a four plus. I think it's an eight or something. Let me check. Do. Poorly trained in an 8, and they rolled a 6, so they're not able to. Uh, when you fail, you just need to roll a dice to see if you either don't do it at all. So if pilot fails, uh, we're going to roll a d6 to see what happens. And I can actually make this smaller, even though when I click here, it's going to... Okay, so we've got a 1. The pilot makes no defensive maneuver, being unaware of the attack. So the mi 8s just cruising along and doesn't realize that this... If, uh, this Mirage is screaming down over the top, and obviously this is an F-18 miniature, but uh, I've struggled to find the correct uh, models for the correct aircraft here, so. Cool, I'm going to make my gun attack. He can't make any defensive maneuvers. Um, if we go to the attacking aircraft, attacking air targets page, um, I'm, I've got a 30 millimeter cannon, which is plus two damage, and I've got two of those, so I'm going to roll two dice here. They're both a five, which is aircraft critically damaged. And I believe two results of that 
Um, destroys the aircraft, as far as I know. Aircraft is damaged a second time, it's destroyed. So whether it's critically damaged or just damaged, that's it. Um, yep. So we don't really need to worry too much about that. And that's interesting. I it says here more detail on the next page, but I don't see any detail there. Uh, it's possible all the detail got put in there, but maybe I'll just double check that. I'm always taking notes on these games when I come back to play them and seeing if something's not correct or if there's something misworded. Uh, I'll probably release an update uh, to Missile Threat in a couple days. With some of these edits. Okay, so that MI8 is destroyed. Uh, it'll make a. I don't think. I don't believe um, helicopters get any. Whoopsie. That's essentially what happens though. <laughs> they don't get any um, pilot check to. To um, eject or anything because they're just. It's hot. You can't really eject from a helicopter. Uh, some can, but not this one. Okay. So, in my. Target's opportunity destroyed, we can put an MI-8, um, which is pretty good. So that's his actions. Uh, our helicopter here is going to move forward six inches. That'll be one action. And then I can do a second, I can do what's called an assault when I move and fire. So I can go just to here. I'm probably just hovering behind these trees somewhere and I'll fire uh, a missile at this early warning radar. It is six inches away. Hot missile has a range of eight inches um, and it's just going to inflict one point of ground damage which I believe destroys it. I'll just double check this though. Taking ground test. Any ground asset hit by a bomb or underground weapon is destroyed and removed from the game. Okay. So I believe it's just destroyed. I don't think I need to make a pilot check or anything, but I better double check that. I've got a, it's a wide angle weapon here, so I can attack one ground target per um, action phase. Uh, and yep, that's pretty much it. Don't require any actions. So I just essentially move forward and fired, and it'll just have that target. And so that's another uh, wing radar destroyed. And that'll be destroyed. That. And then the hot metal is hot missile is spent. Okay, so that's our turn three. Now we turn four, rotation value four. Uh, when are we actually supposed to leave this game? We're going uh, we're coming out on turn five, so this will be the last turn of the game. We draw another card. No more events take place, and because there's no one around, it doesn't really make a difference what this um, mirage does. He's going to go. 10 inches forwards, whoops, hold down tab and it'll, so holding down tab will allow you to measure, so you've got to pick it up, then hold down tab, and it'll measure how far you've moved, uh, and it is going to be 10 inches, I said, um, and this uh, helicopter here is just going to fire both those hot missiles at the mission target. So I can do a a move, an attack, an assault. I can do two assaults, one assault, moving up to five, or I can just move slightly. Doesn't I need? To, I can just stay still, potentially even, and fire. I should be able to fire both of these um, hot missiles at it. I may need to reword the helicopter rule slightly um, to represent that. He's just on eight inches away, so that's perfect. Um, and so that'll inflict two points of ground damage on the mission target. Oopsie. Um, two points. Oops. Ground 
damage on mission target. Cool, so that's pretty much the end of the game. Uh, you can see low risk missions are fairly easy and straightforward. Um, next turn we would all just leave the game. Minecraft would leave the game, so... Whoops. There's real physics in this, in this tabletop. So things can sometimes just fall over like that. And trying to put these dice back on the base is not easy. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll work out some system for that later on. Cool, let's back over here. Now let's um, do the results of the game. So we need to work out. Go past all these random aircraft tables. End the game. Four combat air patrol missions add up the total enemy forces, including ground assets, pilots, and any aircraft that have RGB on the table. On the turn, your last aircraft has left. This is considered to be the points value of the game. On the turn, your last aircraft has left. So right now, all there is is a light triple A left on the game, which ain't much. choose a random light triple A here, which is four points. Now, potentially this should be reworded. To say any aircraft, any, any aircraft that have been shot down as well. Um, so I'll probably add those in. I've got an MI-8 there that was shot down, um, which is another five points. I think that's nine points in total so far, as well as the early warning radar that was destroyed. Uh, early warning radar. Which is a spoon rest. Twelve points. Which gives us twenty-one points in total. So we're gonna say the game is twenty-one point uh, game. Work out your own points, use some standard uh, points cost. So not the market value, just the standard points cost. So I believe that we need to find Mirage 3CZ, which is 29 points. Nine points. We have an average pilot, which is, I think, eight points. Another average, which is eight points. Oh, we've got to add in the pilot for the enemy as well. They had a poor quality pilot in there, poor quality helicopter pilot. If I can find some helicopters. Um, oh, they don't even have a poor quality. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I guess for the... It'll probably be two points, as you can see there. So that'll be 23. As you can see, for the solo rules, it, it generates uh, the pilot quality for helicopters as well, even though helicopters don't often have poor quality pilots in them. Although, they in real life, they would have but I don't tend to include those in the main points, but you can just use two points for that, as you can see there. They've been halved each time. So, 23 points for the enemy. We've got 29, as well as a... Um, a gazelle. I can find that. Oh, gazelle. French version, seven points. And then we have hot missiles. I can find those. There's two points each. And I had four of those. There's eight points, and I had two R five fifties. Oops. Uh dot five fifty should find it. Oopsie, not a comma, but a dot. Two, which is four points each, so that's another eight points. So my total points was 29 plus 8 plus 8 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8, 68 points. Okay, 
Work out your own points, use the intended point value, and all the aircraft. We got the difference between the two points values, as usual, and resolve the outcome of the game as described on page 5 of the Missile Threat Main Rules. So, it's quite likely that we'll easily win this. Points difference. I got 68. I have 33. difference of 35 which is more than which is almost 50 percent so it's more than 30 percent of the difference uh, which is a decisive victory and i can put that in my mission result so decisive victory um okay that's cool so it's a successful mission And now we're going to work out the results in the Mercenary Air Campaign as well. Apply mission results and get paid. Okay, so we've got a successful mission, which is D6 plus three points we'll get. If I go in here and roll the dice, five plus three is eight points. That's pretty good. We'll go to our air campaign here. Just 32.7 points. So we're making some money, which is good. Uh, we have used up uh, three of the hot missiles. Um, so we've only got uh, eight of those left. Didn't use any magic, uh, any up of the magics. We just used our cannon to shoot down that MI-8. Um, Okay, in 1980s, all payments are plus one point. And we are 1980s, so we've got actually 33. And that's just to help you buy more things, more expensive things. Okay, that's cool. Again, experience. After a mission, each pilot will gain one experience for each of the following actions. Destroy an enemy aircraft, ground state, or ground force. So, if I just minimize this slightly. That way we can see everything at the same time. And once again, I usually do this on two screens, but because we're just using one screen to record here, so I'll do it this way. Okay. So experience. Uh, I destroyed an enemy aircraft. Who was in who? Uh, Johannes was in, so Quinton was in the Mirage. He gets one point for destroying enemy aircraft. One experience. Um, Johannes was in the Gazelle. He destroyed one ground asset. Uh, and inflicted damage on the mission target, so that's 2 XP. Um, we didn't do anything else, didn't suppress enemy uh, infantry or conduct reconnaissance, rescue down pilots, didn't land any damaged aircraft. So that's looking pretty good. And that is pretty much the result of the uh, mission. Once we get to 12 um, experience points, we can advance to competent, so it could take us a while. And that is pretty much it. Um, that's kind of how to apply the results of a mercenary air campaign from a solo game. So I hope that's been um, useful for people. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'm, I've just been looking at these rules a bit in depth over the last few days, or the last week or so. Um, and so I, I definitely see some changes to be made, especially around ground forces and the way they work has been a bit uh, one-sided. So I'm gonna do a few small edits to the missile threat main rules and also these solo rules, just to make them a bit easier, a bit easier to play and um, not as extreme. Especially high risk missions are, are crazy, and they're very, very uh, well. They're very, very high risk, almost too high risk that you can't even win. Um, so, yeah, hope everyone's enjoyed, and I'll see you guys all, all around.